Hello scientists, it's scientist Renee back with you. Today we are doing lesson 3.3 in Waves, Energy, and Information, and we're talking about how sounds can differ. And you probably recognize that because we've been talking about how sounds can be different for the past couple lessons. First thing that we're gonna do is describing sounds and waveforms. Now, I remember that word waveforms that we talked about. That was like that squiggly line. And you know what? I think I saw a waveform on this first slide. So what are a few things that we've learned about the ways that sounds can be different from one another? Take a second and either write down some of your ideas or tell somebody in your house. You can pause the video while you do that, and I'll see you in a second. Now, you probably remembered that we know that sounds can have different volumes, and we know that sounds can have different pitches. And that does different things to the waveform. And so this chart lists some of the words we've been using to describe a sound and what the waveform for that sound looks like. So, you know what, let's look at each of these a little bit closer. So the first one, volume, loud or quiet. So I can do a loud clap or I can do a quiet clap. Now those two different claps, there's actually different waves happening. So when I do that loud clap, the height of that waveform is a lot higher than when I do a quiet clap. So those two sounds are different because their volumes are different and the waveform is actually different too. That waveform would be taller if the volume was greater or shorter if the volume was lower. Now let's talk about pitch, which is what we talked about in our last lesson. So if I am talking to a dog, sometimes I notice that the pitch of my voice changes and I might say, hi, Dougie, hi, Dougie. Or if I was gonna change the pitch, I could also say, hi, Dougie, hi, Dougie. And those wavelengths would look different too. So when I say, hi, Dougie, I want you to picture in your brain, what do those waveforms look like? Is it different than when I say, hi, Dougie? So think about, the pitch is about the wavelength. It's how squished together, how far apart those wavelengths are. So when I say, hi, Dougie, those waves are a lot closer than when I say, hi, Dougie. And so the sample waveforms on this chart help us remember what amplitude and wavelength mean. And with a little bit of practice, you are gonna know these right away. Now, we're actually gonna go back into a reading that we've done before, or rather a reading from a book that we've done before. So we're gonna use our reference book again. We're gonna read two sections of the book that contain information about both amplitude, volume, and wavelength, pitch. And remember that scientists read reference books and other informational texts for particular purposes. So our purpose, we're marine scientists. So our purpose for reading is to figure out how sounds can be different from one another so that we can determine how dolphin calves know when their mothers are calling to them and just them. So we're gonna read pages six through seven and pages 34 through 35 in Patterns in Communication. All right, so let's bring this a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna to read to you pages six and seven. Information that travels as waves. For communication to happen, information has to pass from an animal to one or more other animals. Sometimes the information passed directly through touch, but other times it has to travel across a distance. In most cases, that information travels as waves. When you think of a wave, you might think of a wave in the ocean or a lake. This is one type of wave, but there are many other kinds of waves, such as light waves, sound waves, and waves that carry electrical signals. 
A wave is a pattern of motion and can carry information from one place to another. I see a bunch of waveforms here. And look, there are, some of them have different amplitudes. And it also seems like some of them have different wavelengths. These look like they have a much higher pitch because they're close together than these. They also, these look like they have a higher volume than these because they're taller, they have a taller amplitude. When a dog wags its tail, it is sending a visual signal to other dogs. That visual signal travels as light waves. When a dolphin makes a sound, that sound travels as sound waves. When you send a text message, that signal travels as waves that carry electrical signals. All these types of waves may seem very different. However, different types of waves have some things in common. One characteristic of all waves is wavelength. Ooh, we know that word. Wavelength is the distance from the peak of one wave to the next peak, as shown in the waveform below. So we see one peak, the other, and so that is our wavelength from peak to peak. A waveform is a curved line that shows the pattern of a wave. Waves with shorter wavelengths have shorter distances between the peaks. Waves with longer wavelengths have longer distances between the peaks. In a sound wave, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the pitch. And the longer the wavelength, the lower the pitch. Another feature of all waves is amplitude. Amplitude is related to how much energy the wave has. In a sound wave, the amplitude of a wave affects its volume, or how loud the sound is. The louder a sound is, the more energy the wave has and the bigger the wave's amplitude. Quieter sounds have less energy and smaller amplitudes. In the waveform below, you can see how amplitude is represented. So the caption says, let's move that over. In a waveform, amplitude is represented by the height of a wave, measured from the middle, see the middle, to the peak. And now we've gone to pages 34 to 35. Treehopper communication. Treehoppers are small insects that live on the stems of plants in many parts of the world. Often, many treehoppers live on the same plant. To communicate, the treehoppers shake their bodies. The shaking creates patterns of vibrations that travel through their legs and into the plant stem in all directions. Other treehoppers on that plant can sense the vibration through their own legs. Different patterns of vibrations send different messages. Some tree hoppers use vibrations to send a signal to other tree hoppers when a predator is nearby. Tree hoppers also communicate to find mates. Vibrations cause sound waves, so when tree hoppers vibrate, they make sounds. However, to a person, the tree hoppers would sound completely silent. That's weird. That's weird that other tree hoppers can hear them, but humans can't. Treehopper vibrations travel only through the plant. Almost no sound travels through the air, so the vibrations do not make sound that, other, that the human ear can hear. Oh, all right. Still, these vibrations are sound waves. Man, I just learned something cool about sound waves. And so in our caption, we see treehoppers communicate by shaking their bodies and sending vibrations through plant stems. So I'm visualizing this guy shaking his body and then that vibration going through that stem. These vibrations are sound waves, even though humans can't hear them. This group of tree hoppers may be sending each other signals that people can't hear. It's a really cool thing to think about on how all these different ways that animals have to communicate that are different from the way humans do. Now on the next page, scientists use special tools to measure the sound waves and turn them into sound recordings that humans can hear. By doing this, scientists have found that treehoppers make many different sounds. Treehopper sounds can differ in amplitude. The amplitude of a treehopper's sound depends on what kind of plant stem the treehopper is sitting on. The amplitude of the sound is bigger on hard plants, which means the sound produced is louder. Hard plants, I guess I'm picturing like a tree, like a tree trunk. The amplitude of the sound is smaller on wet or soft plants, which means the sound is softer. When I hear wet or soft plants, I think of almost like a grass or 
um, you know, some plant that I can kind of spring back and forth with my hands. Tree hopper sounds can differ in pitch too. Some tree hopper species make sounds that are pure tones. Hmm, I don't know what that means. Oh, a pure tone is a sound that has one constant pitch. Other tree hopper species, like most other organisms in the world, make more complex sounds. For example, some tree hoppers make a series of clicking sounds that change in pitch. Complex sounds can be made up of many pure tones together, with different pitches happening all at once. That's pretty cool. So we've, we've wrapped up our reading. The next thing that we're gonna do is some sorting on the Amplify platform. So we're going to stop the video here and start a new video. I will see you very soon.